Far below the surface of Upper Michigan, there lies an abandoned labyrinth of testing centers, offices, and enrichment shafts. Before it was abandoned to the elements, this was the central headquarters of a research corporation that for decades had been a pioneer in scientific development, Aperture Science. Aperture Science had its humble beginnings in 1943, as company founder Cave Johnson sought to revolutionize the shower curtain industry. The name Aperture Fixtures was chosen to make the curtains appear more hygienic, and the company's high-tech shower curtains quickly flew off the shelves. This success rocketed Johnson to billionaire status in just under a year. Soon thereafter, Johnson used this new wealth to purchase an abandoned salt mine in order to create an expansive new facility for the company. Aperture Fixtures remained focused on innovating shower curtain technology for the next three years, while construction was underway on their new facilities. In 1947, Aperture Fixtures was renamed Aperture Science Innovators, again for the purpose of making their shower curtains seem more hygienic. The company also diversified into experimental physics, and their efforts here became a key part of Aperture's research and development division. Though their methods were unorthodox, Aperture Science quickly became a fixture in the scientific landscape, earning an award for Best New Science Company later that year. In 1956, the Eisenhower administration signed a contract with Aperture Science, making them the sole manufacturer of shower curtains for the U.S. military, with the exception of the Navy. This exception continued to rankle Cave Johnson for the rest of his life, but it didn't stop his progress. The company was repeatedly named the runner-up for the Department of Defense's Contractor of the Year and also received the Spirit of Idaho National Potato Board Award for the promotion of potato science. Johnson was heavily involved in the testing stages of various research projects, particularly those involving live test subjects. These subjects represented the very best America had to offer, astronauts, Olympic athletes, war heroes, and Cave Johnson recorded welcome and information messages for them personally. Much of Aperture's work in this era was focused around the development of a type of quantum tunneling device, repulsion gel, and an army of Mantis Men hybrids, with limited success. After millions of dollars were sunk into these outlandish products without any return on the investment, Aperture Science began to suffer financially. In addition, many of its more conventional products had been pulled from the shelves nationwide for violating health and safety regulations. Under increased governmental scrutiny, Cave Johnson ordered Test Shaft 9, the site of Aperture's most secretive and unethical projects, be sealed. After being implicated in a string of astronaut disappearances in 1968, Aperture Science was forced to appear before the U.S. Senate, declaring bankruptcy soon after. Johnson refused to give up on his company, however, and continued his tests with less desirable subjects. Propulsion gel was perfected by 1972, but this success was overshadowed by the looming threat of Aperture Science's greatest rival, Black Mesa. While Aperture languished, Black Mesa was flourishing, and Johnson suspected the company of corporate espionage. Without any evidence, Johnson grew paranoid and frantic. The company further relaxed its standards for test subjects, actively recruiting child orphans, psychiatric patients, and the elderly. Desperate for a new product that would reverse his company's fortune, in 1982, Johnson invested $70 million the company didn't have into the purchase of moon rocks. With the discovery that moon dust served as a remarkable conductor for wormholes or portals, Johnson took an active role in the company's continued development of portal technology. Cave Johnson's prolonged exposure to moon dust, however, had severely damaged his lungs and kidneys, and his health slowly began to deteriorate. Before his death, Johnson mandated that all employees were also to act as test subjects. 
While this reduced the cost of acquiring new, higher quality test subjects, it sharply impacted Aperture Science's employee retention, and the practice of human testing was eventually phased out. With his death clearly imminent, Johnson prioritized the development of an artificial intelligence, intending to back up his consciousness. The work was not to be completed before his demise, however, and Cave Johnson appointed his most trusted and loyal assistant, Caroline, to succeed him as CEO. Regardless of any protests she might have, Johnson's dying command was to have Caroline's consciousness integrated into the complete AI to continue his work in perpetuity. The Genetic Life Form and Disk Operating System, or GLADIS as it came to be known, was the pinnacle of artificial intelligence, surpassing anything even Black Mesa had produced at the time. Completed and brought online in 1998, after 12 years of development, GLADIS immediately became self-aware, took control of the facility, and flooded Aperture's facility with a deadly neurotoxin during the company's first annual Bring Your Daughter to Work Day. Gladys's murderous streak and unpredictability was partially solved through the installation of a morality core, and she began a permanent cycle of testing aimed at beating Black Mesa in the race to develop functioning portal technology. In a stroke of luck, Black Mesa suffered some sort of cataclysmic incident, leaving Aperture Science as the sole leader in their field. The company was unable to properly take advantage of their newfound position, however, as atmospheric disturbances and other dangerous anomalies, apparently connected to the Black Mesa incident, quickly spread across the Earth. Aperture's facility was locked down, and its remaining employees were forced to continue their work on increasingly antiquated equipment. The facility was later completely abandoned, left entirely under the supervision of Gladys. Eventually, the course of human civilization was forever altered in a mere seven hours, in which all the effort in the world went to waste. What remains of Aperture Science today is just the odd bit of discarded equipment alongside old stories and legends within the surviving scientific community. One legend in particular has recently become the focus of great interest. The Borealis, a research vessel owned by Aperture Science, has been found. The ship was rumored to have vanished with all hands, even a section of its dry dock. Whatever secret is present on the Borealis is almost certainly powerful and immensely dangerous, and might be the key to overthrowing our benefactors. The Templin Institute investigates alternate worlds and realities. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to directly support us, vote in polls to determine future topics, and receive some cool rewards, please consider pledging to our Patreon page.